Hey, Philip. I uh, wanted to ask you about your internal clock and get rid of the ball quick. I saw a stat where the Colts are allowing the fewest sacks per pass attempt. I'm wondering how much your internal clock and get rid of that ball maybe changes with a team like this year with the line you have versus last year, and how much do you think it's changed over the course of your career? Well, I, I do think that uh, getting a ball in my hand on time or uh, accelerating, uh, you know, your, your progression based on what the coverage plays, based on what, you know, what, what, what our reads are uh, from a quarterback position. I've always thought that was very important. I think you certainly the, the role that, that the quarterback plays – uh, in conjunction with the protection and also uh, the quicker you can get it to our guys' hands, um, you know, before guys are breaking on it or give them a chance to catch and run. Uh, I've always thought those things are important. So, obviously, we have a heck of a group up front mixed with the tight ends and backs as well, and they've been unbelievable at protection thus far. Um, but I never think it's one of those things you go, well, shoot, I'm going to kind of uh, – I'm going to hang on it a little longer. Are there times when you do? Yeah, on some shot plays and things that you that you have to. And, and thankfully, we got a group that can they can hold up in those situations. But at the same time, uh, you want to get it out on time, both to help pass protection and I think it, it helps the efficiency of the uh, you know yards after catch as well. Mike Chapel, along that line, Philip, with no, if we go on the premise that defensive coordinators are going to find ways to get to you, disrupt your game, what? How do you judge good predict? protection, good lines. In your mind, what are, are there things that you look at to say that this is a pretty good group or not? Well, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, the tape just shows uh, what, a, what a heck of a group uh, we have here. I mean, it's, it's been proven over the last handful of years, um, both on the tape and you've seen some of the recognition that the guys have gotten uh, and deservedly so. Um, you know, I've always thought from a pocket standpoint, Obviously, you got to have athletic tackles that can, uh, you know, nowadays they're blocking these guys that are 240 pounds that can run 4-4. Four, four. So uh, we have that and the ability to, to, you know, push them by. I've always certainly – a guy like myself is not looking to escape. So I would much rather be able to step up. So if you can just run them by at 10 yards, you know, so um, uh, that that's obviously super important. And then from there, really the interior of the pocket. You know, if, you, if you're getting a lot of push – and there's nowhere – they can run on ball all they want, but if you're stepping up and you're getting a ton of push in the interior, that's when it gets – you know, it's more tough. Uh, it's tougher uh, for a guy like myself, more traditional pocket passer. So, I think the combination of our tackle's ability to uh, handle both the bull rush and the speed guy and then our interior guys really being able to anchor down and not allow too much penetration really creates that – kind of that – uh, that cup right there in that pocket to step up uh, in there and be able to see and find lanes, you know, um, to throw. So um, our guys have done a heck of a job of that. Uh, I think, as you mentioned, some of the numbers support that. And, uh, again, just watching it and both being out there doing it, you know, to a couple games where we've thrown it over 40 times, uh, you know, and it's been unbelievable protection, especially when you're down, you know, 21 nothing, and the other team knows you're going to throw it. Um, that can be a challenge, but our guys, our guys did a heck of a job. Quick, quick follow-up. It's a badge of honor on, on sacks, few sacks for the offensive line. And as much as you like to talk to folks, do they get to you? When, do you have, you've had two sacks where you just couldn't get past the line of scrimmage. Do they say, hey, boy, if you'd only been a half a step faster or not? <laughs> No, they hadn't said anything, but I certainly would like to, have liked to get the pass the line of scrimmage or thrown it away. You know, there was one in the game the other day that I really scrambled right, and I uh, felt like I was moving pretty good. I thought I was going to be able to gain a yard or two, but once I realized I wasn't, I was quick to make sure I threw it away before I stepped out of bounds. Didn't want another uh, another cheap snap, a cheap sack. Counted for the counted for the guys, counted for our team. So, now the guys are doing a heck of a job. I, I hope they know. So far, obviously. I try to tell them as often as I can just, you know, how much I appreciate them, and I, and I hope it goes the other way as well as far as, you know, getting it out on time and not standing back there patting the ball, um, waiting for somebody to to, uh, to pop open. Thanks, Phil. George Bremer. Coach Rag said the other day he thinks the three years that you were together in San Diego, you may not have huddled that entire time. Uh, what is it about that style that kind of suits your game? And, and I know you like to mix it up here, but is that your preferred – uh, method of offense? You know, not necessarily. I mean, I, I think it's the ability to mix it up. Uh, I think it's, it's really what makes it most effective. You know, I think if you're, if you're always huddling or always no huddling, uh, and, and then again, it doesn't matter unless you get first downs. I don't care if you're huddling or, or going no huddle, but um, 
I, I do like that mode, uh, and I think I think as we have this year, uh, and we'll probably will continue to use it as a change up and mix it uh, in times. Sometimes there's games where you you may obviously the game called for it a little bit uh, against Cincy, but there were games I remember back in that that three year stretch where it was just one of those games. It was a no huddle type game. We were going to be in. Uh, you know, only three or four formations, and we're going to go and uh, based on what the defense played and how, how what the looks they gave us. Then there's other games where you go, gosh, no huddle doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think uh, I think uh, you know, coach has a great feel for that, and 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 he and I and, and communicating throughout the week, week by week, we'll know if there's a time to go on a, go on a spurt of no huddle or use it, you know, uh, more regularly, or or you know what, this game we're going to huddle up and and change personnel every other play. So I think that just kind of depends week to week. Joel Erickson. I know you guys did a little bit of a self scout today. What, what, what jumps out at you from your, your own self scout? You know, I think kind of position groups, uh, different got, you know, rooms did different things, you know, as far as, um, you know, maybe some are a little more focused run game things, what we can do better here, you know, whether it's the zone scheme, gap scheme, um, we kind of focus a little more on the third down uh, stuff and red zone. Um, you know, I think, the, I think the biggest thing, too, and I know we always say it, but it's just execution. You know, you look at a lot of those uh, third downs and uh, we've been pretty good, uh, you know, four to six and seven to 10. Uh, we've been over 50%. Um, and then, you know, the two to three was really our worst area, which you think, golly, we got, that's not, that's not acceptable, but it's really just a lack of execution. Um, it, it, there weren't many where you go, they got us. You know the defense just got us, and there were a few, uh, but it's it's only uh, our own uh, self-inflicted wounds. Whether it be a bad throw, obviously there was, you know, uh, four of the six interceptions uh, I think came on. You know they were on third down. Um, you know, in 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 those drives, if we're not going to get it in in those drives with a punt or or a field goal, um, it was more things that we just didn't do well in those in those areas. But so. So you don't just look at it and blame it all on that. We certainly look at it and go, shoot, what can we, what, what do we want to run different, you know, in these situations? So it was a good, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a good, it, it was good today. I think, um, you know, anytime you're coming off a win, going into a bye, it certainly feels a little bit better, right? Looking at some of those. So um, get some rest, get some rest now and, and kind of start getting our eyes towards Detroit as the week goes and, and through the weekend and, uh, and then get ready to go. All right, we'll do three more. Charlie Clifford. Bill, I think we've all noticed how in tune you are when your defense is on the field. We're a little worried at times you're going to pick up your safety days from Athens and get back out there and help them. But what are your takeaways with the unit through six weeks? I'll tell you what, I mean, our defense, is, it's, it's a lot of what, what I saw right across from me uh, during training camp. I think the first thing is just the overall team speed. Uh, and, and, and it's one thing just to be fast, but the way they all fly to the football. I mean, these guys are, uh, um, you know, uh, high effort, high energy fly to the football defense. And then I think just really how, uh, how they've settled in and, and really, really doing a great job. You know, obviously I'm not analyzing this stuff from the sideline on game day, but just hearing, hearing, you know, um, you know, flus talk about it during the week and uh, on on Saturday nights and things. Just how well they're doing, disguising, you know, playing, you know, mixing things up and making it tough on the opposing offenses. So it's been a uh, it's been a heck of a start for that defensive uh, group, and uh, it's it, it is it is fun pulling for them on the sideline. I I've always you know I, I get done when I need to get done watching you know looking at a couple of the, the clips and the pictures and talking to Nick and you kind of constantly. In, communication with Nick and Marcus and Jacoby and, you know, whatever you need to say to the O-line or, you know, different things kind of come up. But I've always uh, been one of those guys that like to stand right there and, and, and pull for our defense. Kevin Bowen. Phil, did you stay true to your word and not read anything after Sunday's game? Yeah, I, I had. And how was it? I think it was pretty good. Will you Will you continue to do that? Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. There's no, there's no plan, much like uh, – the questions I get about the interaction with the opposing team, there's no, uh, there's no game plan. But uh, like I said, really Sunday after the game, I, I felt like I was the same guy that, that I was the previous week. I just played a little better, and, and that's what this shoot this league is, is up and down. And, and you know, I know you've heard coach say it. You know, we're we're not going to ride the wave. You know, uh, certainly you have human emotion and normal, uh, a, a little bit of that 
comes with it, uh, with the highs and the lows. But just really trying to stay steady and, and keep going. I mean, it's a week-to-week -week league. You see it across the league. I mean, shoot, the Cleveland Browns were the, uh, the best team in the AFC. And then that quickly changed. The narrative changes all of a sudden with one week. So, I mean, that can go on and on around the league. So, we just got to stay with it, stay, stay steady. Uh, you know, certainly it would be nice not to hit any other bumps in a row. But we, we may. And we'll handle them as they come. All right, last one, Jim Ayala. Yeah, Philip, I wanted to ask you about a, a specific play. Just curious about kind of pre-snap adjustments. There was a swing pass. I think Jonathan Taylor, you switched sides with him and had Marcus motion inside, and he ended up being running free. It was like a 20-yard play. I was just curious if you could tell us what you saw from the Bengals' defense that, that made it such an easy throw for you. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a, it was a man covers look. Um, and um, what, we had, what we had up just it, it, it wasn't going to uh, bode very well. Um, so, uh, it was just, you know, you have, you have certain checks, uh, that you can get to versus certain looks or certain things we talk about throughout the week. Um, and I, I really didn't know that, uh, or didn't expect, uh, you know, Jonathan to be, uh, running that wide open. I think if you look at the, if you look at that clip again, you'll see that that defensive end was probably supposed to pill with him and cover him. Uh, but he didn't. And, and so we were able to uh, take advantage of that. But, uh, so certainly didn't anticipate that it would be that easy, but just had, you know, Jonathan on free release. We had, you know, some, you know, that Marcus was going to be kind of coming across the field, uh, to, to a degree and a couple other crossers. So it was just kind of a, it was a, uh, uh, you know, just getting us, hopefully trying to get us in the best situation possible and it ended up being even better than anticipated.